Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Tnatmi and uh, today we're going to move ahead and talk about the small intestine uh, with the first part, the duodenum. Before I continue on with the video, I request you all to subscribe to my channel and to all the non-subscribers, I just want you all to know that I make anatomy a piece of cake so you do not want to miss a single video. Let's begin with the duodenum. Basically, your small intestine is made up of three parts. The most proximal part is the duodenum, second part is the jejunum, and then there comes the ileum and then begins your large intestine. So today we're discussing the duodenum. Duodenum is a very important part of the small intestine because whereas the rest of your small intestine is basically all coiled up, duodenum has a very specific structure that you'll have to memorize along with its relations, right? So it begins from the pyloric part, pyloric orifice of the stomach, and it extends till the duodenojejunal flexure which means it extends to the point where the duodenum will meet the jejunum. So it basically has four parts. This is the first part, and then comes a descending part called the second part of the duodenum. Then comes your third part, which is mostly horizontal, and then a small fourth part of the duodenum, after which it joins your jejunum right over here. And then the jejunum is basically all coiled up. So this is the duodenal jejunal flexure means uh, the duodenum is meeting jejunum here at a flexure or at an angle, right? So this is where it extends to. So overall, the duodenum is divided into a uh, superior part, uh, descending part, horizontal part, and an ascending part. So four parts of the duodenum. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it lies right behind the liver and the gallbladder. Uh, let's remove this. Let's remove this. And just in front of the kidney. And you can even see anteriorly in its relation, you can include the transverse colon. Just going to remove that. That's your duodenum. As you can see, this part extending from the stomach all the way till here. It's like a C-shaped curve. And within this curve lies an important structure, the pancreas. More specifically, the head of the pancreas. Basically, your duodenum is a retroperitoneal organ that we've discussed before, which means it does not have any mesentery. When something is retroperitoneal, we've already talked about this, it's mostly fixed and immobile. However, if a part has a mesentery, then it becomes mobile. In the duodenum, although it's mostly majority of it is retroperitoneal, the first part and the fourth part, it's basically two ends have mesenteries attached to them. In case of the first part, this is the lesser and the greater omentum because uh, as the stomach's lesser curvature gives attachment or the greater curvature gives attachment to those omenta, even some part of the duodenum gets involved, more specifically the first proximal 2.5 centimeter of the duodenum, right? And then in the fourth part, there is a uh, mesentery known as the suspensory ligament of treats that we will discuss today. And that is the why this part also is mostly mobile because it has mesentery there otherwise your entire duodenum is retroperitoneal and fixed partially covered by retroperitoneum mostly on its anterior surface so let's go ahead and talk about the first part of the duodenum begins at the pylorus and ends at the superior duodenal flexure which means the first curve in the duodenum and this is the inferior duodenal flexure which connects the second and third part right so first part's length is five centimeter in total and from this 5 cm, it is divided into 2 cm, proximal 2 cm, and a distal 3 cm. This proximal 2 cm of the duodenum is known as the free ampulla or the duodenal cap. And why is that? Because this part right here, uh, when you give a patient a barium meal, which means you are giving him contrast to swallow, and when you visualize under an x-ray this part of the duodenum, it appears as if it is like a cap that you can see. It is a very prominent part of the duodenum. So you can see this part right here. It's like a cap. This is the part where mesentery is lying, uh, the lesser omentum and the greater omentum. Always remember one thing. There are three vertebras, the L1, the L2, and the L3. And along this, your entire duodenum is going to be uh, relationed, or you can say that uh, the first part is going to run in front of the L1 vertebra towards its right side, all right? So it goes all the way here in relation to the vertebra, all right? And the second part runs from L1 to L3 because it's the descending parts. And then comes the third part, which we'll talk about, and then the fourth part, all right? So it's basically going to run along these three vertebras in relation to them, basically, all right? So what happens is the relations of the first part of the duodenum are quite simple. As you can see here, first relation is that anterior to the duodenum's first part lies, what do you think will lie? There is this huge organ called the liver, which lies in relation to the first part of the duodenum. This more specifically, the quadrate lobe of the liver lies uh, anterior to it and along with the gallbladder. Inferior to the first part of the duodenum lies the 
head of the pancreas superiorly lies if you remember this was the lesser omentum its right free margin was the epiploic foramen so superior to the first part is the epiploic foramen and finally uh, lying posterior to the first part of duodenum is a very important relation and this is the gastro duodenal artery as you can see here it is coming from the celiac trunk from the proper hepatic artery also there lies the bile duct and the portal vein posterior to this part i hope you can see over here uh, all right so these are the relations of the first part of the duodenum important clinical related to the first part of the duodenum is that it is the most common site for peptic ulcers and why do you think ulcers occur in the duodenum because the acidic contents of the stomach obviously because they're first entering the duodenum so some acid can also reach here and cause your peptic ulcer so what's important here is because the first part of the duodenum is anteriorly related to the liver and the gallbladder whereas posteriorly to the gastro duodenal artery which is why if there is any kind of ulcer in your duodenum what happens is it can if there is inflammation of the first part of the duodenum due to the ulcer it can start adhering to the liver and the gallbladder obviously because something inflamed it starts getting adherent so it gets adherent to this and may ulcerate the liver and the gallbladder as well and apart from that if this ulcer is posterior to the duodenum it may perforate and it can actually rupture the gastroduodenal artery which can result in severe hemorrhage because of the gastroduodenal artery this is an important uh, point moving on to the second part of the duodenum the second part of the duodenum is a descending part it is basically beginning at the superior duodenal flexure all the way till the inferior duodenal flexure it consists of the major duodenal papilla now what is the major duodenal papilla it lies posterior medial to the second part of the duodenum it is where the bile duct and the pancreatic duct will open into like the pancreatic duct and the bile duct coming from the liver these two will open into it and uh, provide their enzymes into the contents of your intestine right so uh, the major duodenal papilla is lying 8 to 10 cm uh, distal to your pylorus of the stomach The second part of the duodenum extends from the right border of the L1 all the way till the lower border of the L3 and then it gets continuous with the third part at the uh, inferior duodenal flexure. So it is about 7.5 cm in size. Let's talk about its relations. This part is mostly retroperitoneal and fixed and anterior to the second part lies mainly the uh, transverse colon all right we all know that the transverse colon was coming the liver also is extending to this part more specifically the right lobe of the liver these are the anterior relations of the second part of the duodenum and then let's talk about the medial relation which is very easy it is the pancreas all right you can see right here it's the head of the pancreas you can see here the bile duct is coming into it that can also be considered in the medial relations of the second part posterior to it lies as you can see right here is the right kidney and the right renal vessels which are coming you can see this is the inferior vena cava this is the aorta these are giving your renal vessels there is a muscle over here which lies the muscle of the lower back this right here will be the psoas major as well all right so this is the second part posterior relations so let's move on to the third part of the duodenum now the third part of the duodenum is about Uh, the longest in length of all the parts it's 10 cm in length it goes it basically runs horizontally and then slightly upwards so it's going basically crossing your l3 vertebra and then it reaches fourth part of the duodenum the most special part of the third part of the duodenum is that it is lying directly in front of your two major vessels these are the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta right so in the posterior relation of the third part it's easy that the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta are uh, there and mostly their branches can also be considered in uh, the posterior relation apart from that right ureter can also be seen lying in the posterior relation of the third part of the duodenum along with the right psoas major muscle uh, superior to the third part of the duodenum you'll see again the pancreas the uncinate process and the head of the pancreas finally anterior to the third part of the duodenum lies the superior mesenteric basically what happens is your aorta is giving the superior mesenteric artery uh, branch to supply your uh, midgut derivatives right so it gives the superior mesenteric which runs anterior to the third part of the duodenum so that is considered in the anterior relations of the duodenum along with that the root of mesentery is also seen here in Moving on to the fourth part of the duodenum. The fourth part is the shortest part. It is about 2.5 cm in length and it begins with the third part at the L3 vertebra's uh, left border and it moves upward. 
you cannot even call it the ascending part because of that it goes up to the l2 vertebra after which it continues as a duodeno jejunal flexure which is lying right here and then your jejunum starts right so this fourth part uh, its anterior relations it's the transverse colon the transverse mesocolon posterior to it lie the left sympathetic chain which is lying close to the back right and the left renal vessels obviously you can see this is the fourth part and you can see the renal vessels going into the left kidney along with that the left gonadal artery and the inferior mesenteric vein superior to the fourth part of the duodenum you can see right here lies the body of the pancreas so these were the important relations of the duodenum these are very important and you can only understand them if you are visualizing it because anatomy is mostly the game of visualizing structures join me in the next video where i'll talk about the suspensory ligament of reeds along with some neurovascular supply of the duodenum thank you so much for watching